BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Stress Strain Curves. What's one of them then? Well, now, uh, what happens inside a metal when it supports a load? Now, I remember covering this in the chemistry for uh, Unit 1. Uh, you should understand the structure of a metal, the fact that all the atoms, you can think of the atoms as being in layers. Now, if you apply a, a tensile load, in other words, if you stretch it for a small load, then you can imagine that the atoms are all joined together by little springs, the interatomic bonds, the bonds between the atoms. And for a small load, all you're doing is stretching those springs. And when the load goes away, it will behave elastically. And that means it will return to its original length, just like a spring, if you don't, don't go beyond the elastic limit. And this is called elastic deformation. So elastic deformation is for a relatively small load, uh, it will return to its original length. The interatomic bonds will pull it back to where it was to begin with. That's for a small load. Now, if the load is big enough, what will happen is you'll start breaking bonds. Okay, so uh, in a ductile, remember what the word ductile means, in a ductile metal, what will happen is that the layers of atoms will slide over each other. Uh, and this is permanent deformation, or another word for that is it's plastic deformation. So for small loads, we get elastic deformation. It returns to its original length. For larger loads, uh, it is plastic deformation, permanent deformation. Okay, if you see a, a plastic surgeon uh, to get a nose job, then that is permanent. Your nose is that shape forever. It's plastic deformation. Now, here is a, a very useful graph for a particular material. For example, for copper, this is a, a stress strain curve for a ductile metal. And it tells us a lot about the metal. Um, there's various points on the graph that you need to be familiar with. And that's what I'm going to talk about for the rest of this video. This is a graph of stress against strain. And it basically tells, tells us how the metal will behave when we put different amounts of stress on it. So first of all, the limit of proportionality. Up to that point, uh, the material will obey Hooke's law because the graph is a straight line. Uh, up to that point, that is the limit of proportionality. If you wanted to work out the Young's modulus, then you would use the value of stress and the value of strain at that point. Okay, that would tell you the Young's modulus of the metal. So when it stops being proportional, when the graph stops being a straight line, that is the limit of proportionality. Now, the elastic limit, uh, otherwise known as the yield point, is a little bit further on. OK, the yield point, this is where plastic deformation starts to happen. Before that, it's elastic deformation. It will return to its original length. Beyond the yield point, to yield means to give in. And your, your metal has given in. OK, it is permanently deformed. Uh, and that is the elastic limit, the yield point. And then lastly is the breaking point, which should be pretty obvious. The breaking point is when it breaks, when it snaps. Now, the yield stress is the stress that causes it to yield, pretty obvious. And then the breaking stress, or sometimes it's called the ultimate tensile strength, Remember that strength is all about breaking, resistance to breaking. So the breaking stress or the ultimate tensile strength is the stress needed to actually break the thing. 
Uh, last point on this video is the fact that I said these graphs tell us a lot about a material. Uh, a ductile metal, for example, copper, is top left there. There's lots of plastic deformation will take place. OK, uh, and that's typical for a ductile metal. There's lots of layers of atoms sliding over each other. You have to do a lot of work to break it because it's tough. The one top right there is very characteristic for a, a brittle material such as glass. There's elastic deformation uh, and then that's it. Then it breaks. There's virtually no uh, plastic deformation because in a brittle material such as glass, there are no layers of atoms. So there's no sliding of layers of atoms. Uh, when it breaks, it breaks. Uh, bottom left is an interesting one. That's rubber. Um, and basically rubber, you start stretching it and it gets less stiff, but then it gets much more stiff. And that's to do with the, um, the uh, polymeric, the polymers, the long chains of carbon atoms untangling. Um, we do it in A-level physics anyway. You don't need to know about it. Uh, steel, that's a stress strain graph for steel. There's uh, some plastic deformation, but not as much as for a ductile material. And there's this little bump in the graph, which is an interesting thing. If you do engineering at a higher level, you may well talk about that.